Now, the Warriors have Steph, and you don't, Sacramento. <laughs> you don't. Steph Curry last night passed Dirk Nowitzki for 16th on the NBA's playoff all-time point score list. Oh. I mean, he's moving up the record books. He scored 30 points in it. He scored 30 twice in this series so far. And he had that look yesterday. He had that look early where it was like, oh, yeah, he's not, lo- he's not losing today. He's not losing today. He looked at that crowd and said, you know, this is our night. I know Draymond's not here. I know GP2's not here. How about the one he pulled from almost half court? I know. No, no, no doubt. But here's what he said what he about said. history. Yeah. He talked to Ernie Johnson on Inside the NBA. This was a damn great quote by Stephen Curry last night. Like you said, there's a lot of distractions and noise around uh, the series. Obviously, you know, losing both games up there was a tough way to start. And you wanted to come home with some good focus. And then you get that call that he's just uh, suspended. And it's a tough blow. But yesterday at practice, we had really good energy understanding what the, the mission was. To understand we couldn't change anything about the decision that we knew was wrong. But that if we could come out and win tonight, it changes the momentum of the series. <laughs> And it gives us an opportunity to just make it about basketball. And that was Draymond's message the whole time was make the, the right adjustments, come with the right energy, protect our home court. When he gets back on Sunday, we got to capitalize off of that and try to win and even up the series. So we did what we supposed to do. They say, you know, Draymond's got a history. So do we. So we, we know how to bounce back. And that history of bouncing back, they've done it time and time again. 2018, down 3-2 to the Houston Rockets at home, down 22 after the first quarter. Clay goes crazy. They go to Game 7, they beat the Rockets, and they end the Houston Rockets. About 3-1 gets OKC. Huh? You like them? You like them, Apples? I mean, 2-1 in Boston, down 97-90, midway through the fourth quarter. Backs against the wall. I can't take you serious. I can't Why? take you serious Why? with those glasses on. <laughs> well, you better. <laughs> you I feel like you're pulling me over and you're like a CHP cop. Uh, you can do that. Don't tell you goodbye, this man. That's what they wear, right? D and G's. That's if what you're we, on YouTube that's what we right do in now, the bay. If you're not you know, and you're driving around, Bonte is wearing, I, they're like aviators, gold rim. You know what? Dark shades. I, I, I feel good. I know. I can tell. The sun's out. The weather's feeling good. Dude, he just called Maverick right now. He's like Tom Cruise and Top Gun. Yeah, you know, you know. Is that, does that make me Iceman? <laughs> sure. Sure, Val why Val Kilmer not? over here. Why not? Hey, Val Kilmer is one of the sleaziest actors of all time, well, and I, I'm here for it. Well, well you know He's what? one of the great actors no, of our generation. No, I love him, Forget but f- he got so hefty over the years. Well, he yeah, had some medical issues, but we won't get into that. Well, the drugs. Steph Curry was asked later on if his quote was just spur of the moment. Oh, I didn't know I mean, that. a little bit both, just understanding what the, the moment is, again, of how bad of a decision I think the league made on suspended him first and foremost and you're frustrated with that but you also have to understand we have i know bob said it up here yesterday we have a job to do and there's nothing we could do about it so just lock in on on what the task at hand is and you know understanding we've accomplished a lot on this stage and you kind of have to dig into that identity a little bit and that comfort zone of who we know ourselves to be when your back's up against the wall and you have a night like tonight, so uh, it definitely gave us a lot of life, and it was a nice way to respond to these last 48 hours. And then Moses Moody. Everybody's talking about Moses Moody. Everybody's talking about Loon Dog. We'll get right back to the calls. How about Moses Moody? How about this quote from a 20-year-old in his second year out of Arkansas? I feel like, I feel like, like winning is a skill. And, you know, some people coming up as a kid, you might not have been on a good team. Then you go to college and they might, your college might not have been that good. Or your high school, you might have been the best one, but your team doesn't win. You come to the NBA, you might go to a team that's not that good. So, so you've never really been in that circumstances, some circumstance coming up. So I feel like that's really a positive when you, when you can and you, and you're used to it, used to not necessarily winning, but fighting to win or sacrificing to win, all the things that go into winning. He's right about that. I mean, there is there is a skill to winning. There is, and there's a mindset you got to have. Yeah, there's a mindset you got to have, especially on this team in this organization. That guy's 20 years old. He I sounds know. like a like a 10 year vet. It's I mean, unbelievable. We've talked to him in person. Oh my god, we, we've we've gotten to know Moses Moody. The guy's just a pro. He is. He's just a pro. I mean, he's going to fit in on a lot of basketball teams over the course of his career. Now, is he going to be an all star? I don't know. Is it going to be an all NBA defender? I don't know. But he can do a little bit of everything. He He's got a little the ball. Curry, Corey Brewer ish in him. I like that. Corey Brewer, Florida. You know, I, I think there's more to his game from the outside than Corey Brewer's, but right. they, like, he, he's just 
sneaky, long. He's a little quicker than you think he is. Um, I like him. I thought his length yesterday as a defender was excellent, obviously against uh, Monk and specifically against De'Aaron Fox. And he just provides another guy out on the perimeter who could just stay in front of people. No doubt. No doubt. I, I loved his performance yesterday. But it all starts with Stephen Curry. I don't want to get that twisted. Looney, we're going to talk a lot about Looney over the next two hours. We have Ron Adams, assistant coach, coming up at 830. Mr. Fab in the 9 o'clock hour. But Stephen Curry in that 36-point performance, it's just being a leader that he is. You know, you think about the all-time leaders in pro sports, whether it's Tom Brady, whether it's Tim Duncan, Hakeem Olajuwon, Michael Jordan. Steph's right up there with them. And I every time I watch him now, as we get older and over, older, and he's in his 14th year, and we watched his entire career. Yeah. And I'm watching him yesterday. And when he did that, I was standing next to Festus and Zena Keda, the great Zena Keda. And Steph, it was a timeout, and he's wandering around half court. Midway through the second quarter, he said, okay, <laughs> I like where this is going. I like our energy. And he had that look. It's like what you do and, at the break. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. I know we rolling. I see over a thousand viewers on YouTube. Okay, I see you. I see you. Yep. Mm hmm. One of them shows. Mm hmm. And I said, Oh yeah. How lucky are we to watch this guy on a daily basis? Well, and I and it's and it's a reminder to me personally. Yeah. To never take what we're watching for granted because we grew up watching the NBA. And we grew up watching Michael Jordan. You grew up watching Hakeem and you, all Charles Barkley and Mully right here in our back and these great players. And we were blessed to have Steph Curry drafted here. After a potch draft by the Minnesota Timberwolves. And yesterday is just another reminder for me. It's like, man, this is an all-timer. Well, there's no and doubt. And we got free access to watch this guy every single game. Now, not free for a lot of people. I get it. I apologize. But I've been lucky yeah. personally. We're lucky personally. We get to watch him on TV every night. This guy is just an all-time leader, man. And he's an all-time winner. And there was no doubt in my mind. There was no doubt in my mind. They were... Going to win that game yesterday. Well, and as a fan of just the game, the sport, seeing De'Aaron and him go back and forth has been very fun. I think De'Aaron Fox, and I we talked about this beforehand, my um, respect level for him cannot get any bigger. I mean, he's just been outstanding in terms of trading blows back and forth, getting to his spots. Different, very different from Steph Curry. Right. But I see a lot of the same the traits. You right. know, like the, I'm talking about the leadership traits, mm -hmm. the... Um, I'm going to keep coming at you. I'm not going to lose confidence. I'm going to uplift teammates. I'm going to make them better. I'm going to get to my spots on the floor, even though the entire defense yep. is set to set me to stop me. I see a lot of the same things, even though it's done differently, that Steph Curry does. No and, it, and I don't say that flippantly. I say right. that with tremendous respect. No, he's a leader. He's the perfect leader for that Sacramento Kings franchise. They've got an ambassador. They've got a dude they could build around. He's the one for them. Yeah. There's no doubt. they got a good one in him. And he's a problem. De'Aaron huh. Fox is still getting to His every spot. Game. He's getting to every His single three. spot. He is so fast. I didn't he's know his three was this silky. And he's strong. Yeah. I mean, he's only shot 32% for the three-point line. But again, if you ask me, who am I building around? De'Aaron Fox or John Morant? It's not even close. It's not even close. Give me Fox all day. Because I know Fox is at least going to try to guard. He's going to be like, no, 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 no. I got this. I want Curry. That's a throwback player. That's old school right there. De'Aaron Fox is a problem. And you know what? He still worries me. In a close game um, in the fourth quarter? Yeah. He worries me. Well, this is far from over. Last night no was doubt. a huge win that was necessary. I think Sunday is going to be one of the biggest games, so, uh, you know, uh, by I, far I of the year. Wait. That's that, How is that I, like an understatement? I can't wait for that game. And, folks, you want to get there early. It's a 1230 start. It's a 1230 start. You got a Giants game right down the street against the New York Mets. It's going to be hopping. You know how it is on Sundays. There's roadways closed on Sundays. Get to Chase Center early, and you want to be rocking and rolling because a lot of people were talking about, oh, well, Chase Center wasn't that loud yesterday. I was in that tunnel. I watched the first quarter and a half from that tunnel. How many games have you been to at Chase, you think? A lot. A lot. Like 250? I, I don't know. A lot since it's opened. I mean, have they even played 250 games there? I don't know. You've probably been to, what, 75% of them? Yeah, at least. Okay. So what did you think? About last night? Yeah, the energy in comparison. I just told you, first quarter and a half, there was a vibe. There was a, you could you could feel the desperation in the air. And you could feel Dub Nation saying, all right, Warriors, let's go. Every time there's a little mini run by the Kings, all right, Warriors, let's go. You felt it. B.A. said at the top of the broadcast, it feels like it's as loud as go to one. Now, it probably wasn't. It probably wasn't. 
And I know some people still miss Oracle Arena. I get it. But Oracle Are Arena became a corporate crowd by the end. It did. Oh, there's no doubt. Winning, and there was a lot of fans leaving did, early. Yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't like afford. the We Believe crowd. It yeah. wasn't like the 2012, 2013 crowd or the 2017 crowd or the 2016 crowd. It wasn't. But Chase Center was hopping last night. There was a vibe in there. At least I felt it. From my vantage point, I felt it. I was like, okay, there's energy in the building. And you know what? There wasn't a lot of King fans there. I looked around. You had a couple Kings fans here and there. There was probably about two to 300 Kings fans. And I'll probably, probably give them a little more credit. Because you know what? Kings fans didn't really want to come down to the dental office. They knew what, what they knew what time it was. So I don't know what you heard about Chase Center last night. But Shasky, I felt like there was a vibe there. I felt like it was a well, vibe. I, but I, I felt it through the good. television. I thought it sounded good. I mean, right. people are losing their mind. It's not as loud as what it should be. I, I thought it was fine. Right. And, and also, you got to get the... When you throw up a lot of bricks like both teams did in the first half, come on, don't do that on air. Turn off the mic. Can't do that. Radio Ed Kids, Shasky. Did you hear that? Yeah. No, I no. did. It was all in my ear. Oh, sorry. No, they didn't hear it. Oh, I'm bad. Crap. My bad. Damn, you crushed that smoothie. You I'm just brought thirsty. It five minutes ago. Hungry. Damn. Uh, but how can the crowd get into a game? Thank you, Joe and the Juice. <laughs> how can the crowd get into a game when one team shoots 32% from the floor and the other shoots 34%? There was a lot of bricks. Yeah, but there were a lot of exciting defensive moments from this there team. Was. And it felt there like was, but it, the common fan. What did they get charged up over? Buckets. Yeah, that's true. And Points. the flow back and forth. I I I hear you on that one. And um it, it did feel though there's a sense of urgency in that first quarter from the Warriors. They were obviously carrying the ball a lot better right. uh in terms of not trying to turn it over. But I could feel it from the crowd. They were trying to right. will that team to hitting a bucket. They just missed so many threes. Right. One, so one turnover. Many threes. One turnover in the first quarter. One turnover. All right. And if you want to say hey, they don't really have a good home court advantage, Chase Center is dry. Well, last year they went 11 and 1 in the postseason at Chase Center. One in the regular this season, 1 and 0 this year. Regular season, they were 33 and 8. At home last season, they were 31 and 10. What was the, the most uh, raucous part of the, of the game? It felt like when Steph hit that three right before they called the timeout. They were in transition. Oh, Steph yeah, yeah, kind of yeah, just yeah. stopped. Oh. They threw him the three, oh. and then he stopped and finally stuck his hands it, up. It, it, was, it was nuts. In there. That was like a 35, 40 it was, footer. It was nuts. And we haven't seen a lot of those this year from Steph. It was nuts. Let's get to May Money real quick. May Money, oh, May Money before the break. And then we got everybody else coming up on the other side. We got Injury Report coming up. May Money, what's happening? Hey, wee, what's up? <laughs> what's going on, May Money? I just needed a win, hey. 420, and a hug. Yep. Yeah, the formula. The formula. What you got, May Money? How was your 420? Who, 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 oh, my God. Amazing. Who got backhanded now? Ooh. Wackermento Kings, get out of here. <laughs> well, got one more. I have, Go ahead, Bay Buddy. Finish <laughs> up. Oh, yeah. No, they ain't winning no more games. No, oh, they're I not. so much fun. They know that. They I'm, know I'm that. hype. I'm hype. I'm hype. I'm so juiced. Man, that, that was a great game. Yeah, that was a backhand for you. Stop there it is. again, Draymond. <laughs> All right, Bay Buddy. We see you later. <laughs> She's hyped. Again, uh, you know, you know he's I, winning into the couch. Bro. I don't want any stomps. But here's the deal, B. It's a great win. They got a lot more work to do. This series is far from from over for either team. They, they got to hold serve again and win on Sunday, and then we can start having real conversations about the road games that are going to be facing them. Well, yeah, that th that's there's no doubt. They've got to hold serve. There's no doubt they, they can't hold go down serve, three one. But you know what, Shasky? They're not losing another game in this series. <laughs> You're that confident, dude? What? Am I that confident? You see the shades that I'm wearing? You see these shades right now? You're going to ask me if I'm that confident? Kings fans know it's over. So you know what Kings fans can do? And they can do this at the Golden 1 Center once the series is over next Friday at Chase Center when they when, they, when the Warriors wrap this up. They can go ahead in the offseason or maybe their first game of the season when the Warriors are celebrating ring night. The Golden 1 Center can raise that banner. We beat the Warriors twice in the first round. And it go right next to the Pacific Division Championship. That's the banner they can hang next. They should hire me up in Sacramento. I got all kind of ideas for you guys. Well, I mean, the beam is one of the great marketing moves of all it time. I I'll give them but that. The beam, that is the beam will not be lit the rest of this. <laughs> the, the next week, hell, the beam's going to be on ice until next season. The turnover chain, the beam, I would say the trident up in the Seattle. There are some pretty cool. Uh, the, the beam's pretty listen, cool. I'll give cool. it to them. It's it a pretty cool, cool it thing. It is cool. But you know what? The next time the, the, next time the beam will be lit will be when they win a game in the California Classic.